world, my name is Nicholas Montes, and you are? Carlos Montes, he's that. And you're watching my YouTube channel, Nicholas Montes. Welcome back to another YouTube channel video, everybody. I'm so excited to have you all back here together again. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be doing um, something similar to what I did a month ago with my mom, where I ranked uh, the six MC movies I wanna make part one video, th th those movies I announced in that video. Um, but now I'm doing my dad. Um, but real quick before we get started with it, I just gotta say that there's gonna be a difference with, with this um, that's very different from what I did with my mom because in that video I did um, sort of a ranking style to it. This time I'm just gonna be doing like just announcing them the way I did in that first video because in that video it was, it was kind of confusing me ranking them too. So I'm just well, in the future for these types of videos I'm just gonna be um, just announcing them and talking about like what are they excited for. So without further ado, let's get started talking about six of these movies once again. So once again, the suspenseful Iron Man is basically gonna be about Iron Man's son, where it takes, it basically explains some questions that technically, if you really watch the movie, it will basically explain why Tony Stark and why Pe um, he was not with P Tony Stark and Pepper in Avengers Endgame, like when P Morgan was there with them. Um, and it will also explain like, like um, his place in the universe, how and how he's gonna become the next Iron Man and how he like comes together with the Stark family and all that stuff. Um, and really it's gonna be like a very fun movie with cool action like all the other Iron Man movies. So I know you're not like the biggest like fan of the MCU. I mean, you haven't really seen many movies. We've seen the Avengers movies together. But what I, from what I just said, what are you excited like from what I just said, what are you excited to see from this movie? Okay, uh, basically, we need to bring back the same people that did the Marvel movies before, the same the same uh, superheroes, and it will be, I guess it will be a challenge for, for the movie, too. Well, I mean, well, I'm going to bring back the people that were in the original movie, like the ones that are, that were with Tony, like the people that are part of his family, like his wife, his, his, his daughter, his butler, like all of those people, I'm bringing them back and they're going to be, he's going to be joining the family. So yeah, th I guess that's how we close out. But now let's move on to the next movie. So once again, this movie tells the story of Hulk's son, Scar, where basically, instead of becoming an, ac an actual gamma radiation, gamma monster, instead he's gonna become the professor, a professor gamma monster, except his power levels are much darker, except he's kinda like, you know, Miles Morales, where he's Spider-Man, but he's not, but he's kinda different where he has stingers, but this Hulk is, mu is more like, he has the powers of Hulk, but he's very different in sort of ways. Um, and you're also gonna be bringing back some some cool new Hulk characters, such as like She-Hulk, introducing a um, a bomb, and then bringing like the the leader in, Abomination in, and also bringing back Hulk, um, Bruce Banner, Mark Ruffalo's Hulk, and his family as well, and introducing um, uh. Betty Ross as like the actual Hulk that she is and his daughter so I'm actually kind of excited you love Hulk so you're probably excited to see um Hulk's son on the big screen right yes and that would be great because it would be father like son so but, uh I hope that the son will be just like his dad oh and I mean he's gonna have his own particular things or way he will do things but Hopefully he's going to be like like his dad because I love the Hulk. Hulk is just to be my superhero since I was a kid. Well, well, here's the thing. Um, basically, if you if you know the if you if people if you guys know the Hulk origin story, he technically is not born the way he was. He was born as a human, but there was this big gamma radiation explosion that turned him into the Hulk, and that's kind of my, my my sort of origin story. Except like he was not born a Hulk. Like he has no gamma radi radiation levels. He was just born a normal human, but then this gamma radiation explosion happens, and his son gets lost from his family, and he teams he meets with A Bomb and She Hulk, 
and they, they're uh, they're working together to like cure him or like kind of cure him but still stop abomination and leader from creating this massive gamma army so i actually have some nice ideas and i, I think you'll like this film too but my dad is not fond of their, their, of having more hulks in the marvel universe but hey there are more hulks in the marvel universe So once again, this film continues, it, it basically is two years after the suspenseful Iron Man where Arnold Stark is now the next Iron Man, but he has some issues, he's having trouble with his new life, he's having trouble being the next Iron Man, working for the, working, being the new founder of Stark Industries, and being, kind of being the next Tony Stark, that's kind of what people are thinking of him. And I want to use that, that, like that little thing in Spider-Man Far From Home where he, he was kind of, people were thinking that he was going to be the next Iron Man since um, Spider-Man From Home is kind of like the memorial for Iron Man. Um, and like he doesn't know how to balance that and that's kind of what I'm doing in this film. Along the way, you're also he's also going to be um, fighting War, um, not War Machine, uh, Whiplash and Justin Hammer again with Sam Rockwell and stuff like that. And you're also going to be, I, I haven't mentioned this before, but you're also going to be getting the, um... What, what what is that robot's name? I forgot. But it's the super adaptoid that Justin Hammer makes, where he can mimic like different heroes' powers. That that's kind of what I'm doing with that. Um, so some pretty cool ideas. But as you all know, I'm not the biggest fan of Iron Man 2 just because of how many plot it is, how many pl plots it is. Because when you get to the third act, you don't really know what type of plot it's trying to solve and have a good ending to. So, after everything I just said, are you excited for this movie more than the original Suspenseful Iron Man? I just hope that Iron Man comes out to be a little much better than he was before in the movies. Uh, he, for him to come out with a uh, different, uh, what do you call it, like... Uh, suits? Not other suits, uh, you know, like, what is it that he does exactly when uh, him being a superhero? What is, what is his powers that he has? It's, the powers come from his suit. Correct. So, what 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 are the powers are? What, what are they? Well, well, I mean, well, I mean, with, with like the new suit that we saw in Infinity War and Endgame, those are kind of some new powers that he added to this suit, with like the sword and the type of wings and like the pulsar blasters. Like mostly his powers are like, like uh, guns and missiles and pulsar or pulsar blasters. Those are sort of his powers. Okay. So that, that's what I'm saying. So for him, if he, if he's going to make another movie and everything, for him to come out with different powers for him, because we already know what he does, you know, for him to make a, the movie more exciting, for him to do different things. Well, well, I'll see what I can do. But remember, this is not about Tony Stark. We're moving on to a new story with Arnold Stark, the son of Tony Stark. Remember, that's what we're talking about. We're, well, I mean, Tony Stark could return in the future, but, you know, his last performance in the MCU is, is going to be Black Widow um, this July, but yeah, we'll see what happens in this movie, if it's made. So once again, this movie tells the, son, the, the story about the son of Thor, Magni, where basically, much like Scar, he, his story is very, very simple, where Magni was, was just born a normal human on this new Norway Asgard and he wants to be like his father and protecting the nine realms but even though this new Asgard takes place on earth the people of Asgard the gods and stuff he's put to Thor has after ever after the after he well I mean I don't know what's gonna happen in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and Thor Love and Thunder but whatever happens to those films I'm hoping that Thor will return to that new Asgard and be like the ruler of it and like resign from being Guardians of the Galaxy so that way he could rule the Asgard and kind of, um, uh, even though the Asgard is on Earth, he, I want him to still protect the, be the king of, a, the, of the Nine Realms and protect them of, out in space so he gets like different people that want to participate in Norway and be like these gods, uh, but he wants to be a part, Magni wants to be a part of that, but his father just can't let him because he can't, he doesn't want him to get hurt. So he decides to go on this journey to find 
uh, this hammer, like one of the hammers that he wielded as like, as Thor did in like the, the Thor trilogy. Along the way, he meets some of Thor's hum uh, Midgardian friends, like um, Darcy Lewis's daughter, Eric Selvig's son, Darcy's intern's son. Uh, but they but there's a twist to it where they get superpowers. And then you also meet like the other kind of Heimdall that can see, that can summon the Bifrost. Um, and I also want to bring in kind of like the Wrecking Crew. If you don't know who those people are, they're basically like these people that are like records. You've got like this guy that has a Wrecking Ball, one that has like a uh, crowbar, one that's like kind of like a, um, kind of like a strong version of Captain America, except he's not Captain America at all. And then you have like this other guy that like, he's kind of like Juggernaut except he like smashes his head into like other things and then i also want to make this like uh character that's similar to the to black manta where he's a where people think that the as guardians like thor and stuff are like vikings so i want to kind of like ha add that viking style to it and add that like black manta arc to it where he teams up with loki to basically get an armor to destroy Magni, and I'm thinking we could use the destroyer armor for that. And the destroyer armor is definitely perfect for something like, for a concept like that. Uh, it also will be bringing Loki back. And the way I'm doing that is taking that 2012 Loki. I mean, I don't know what we're gonna, what's gonna happen in the end of Loki show, but whatever happens, I hope he, he just, I'm, I'm not saying I want him to destroy the TVA, but I want him to like, have, have the other Lokis as well as the other variants going on. So, yeah. So, there's some pretty good ideas. Tell me, after everything I just said, what are you excited from this film? Because there's a lot I just said. Yes, there is a lot you said, but uh, I'm not familiar with the character. Yeah. I'm a superhero, you know, I'm not. I, I know you're a Marvel fan and everything, but me, um, I grew up with uh, Spider Man. I grew up with Hulk, Superman, and stuff like that. So I don't know about that character, so I cannot say much about it. Just what you what you say, I mean, I just hope that everything comes out great for whatever you, whatever you decide to do. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, one day, I think after, like, after I'm done doing, like, these sort of videos, because I'm technically, the videos that I'm doing with Mom and you, I'm doing them by the first videos I did back in, like, my early videos. So the next, the very next video, basically, I did after this was like the MCU ranking. So one day we're gonna actually, I want to watch the MCU movies with you, like all of them, from Iron Man to whatever film that happens after that. I want to watch them all with you, so that way you can understand. But I'm gonna try because you're not really used to this sort of out, out outside world of Earth movies, because you know it's not really your style. You're more, you're more like into the comedy action movies. <laughs> But yeah, I, he doesn't have much to say, but hopefully we can watch the four yes. films one day. So once again, this movie talks about Captain America's son, James Rogers, which is technically a reference to um, James Buchanan Barnes, which is Bucky Barnes. Uh, so basically, I'm taking the concept of... James Rogers, if you, if you remember what happened to Steve Rogers in Avengers Endgame, where he basically used the time machine to go back with Peggy after he turned the stones to the original timelines. Uh, basically, there's this attack that happened that somehow because... I'm making this little story that the living villains of the MCU uh, went back in time and brought back Thanos, and so because of that, they're going to be using the time machine to basically cause ruckus to Steve Rogers' timeline, but James Rogers decides to be, he's kind of like Steve, a younger Steve Rogers, where he wants to be the hero and take sacrifices. And he gets the super soldier serum, and when Steve, when he comes back home from this big attack, Steve Rogers realizes what he has to do. He has to send his son to the future to help to team up with Sam Wilson, the new Captain America, and Bucky Barnes, the White Wolf, to go stop Red Skull, but the, but because they're the government, they just do not care for him because he's just a kid, even though he's very muscular once he gets there. So then he teams up with Bucky's son, which is just going to have this very cool dynamic where I'm calling them the Roaring Commandos instead of the Howling Commandos. Uh, 
where you also get these kind of like cool characters and you'll actually get an arc for Bucky's son and like you'll you'll also just get some very fun and cool action sequences and kind of make you care for the characters and the stakes will be really high and I, I, I just have a lot going for this film and I think that it's because of the, it's because the Captain America franchise has turned into an action franchise, not rather than a war franchise. So after everything I just said, are you excited to see a Captain America war film in the present day of the MCU? What? The Captain America is, is similar to what I what you said uh, what I said earlier with uh, Thor. No, no Magnus no. Thor's son. No, with uh, Iron Man. Iron Man, yes. So it's like I don't know much about those that hero, Captain America. So I can't say much about it. But I, you know, it, what you said. Um, if you if you can make the film to make it happen and everything and make it uh, a positive a, a positive film, it would be great. Yeah, I definitely. I mean, I know this film probably will ruin the character arc for. Sam and Falcon Winter Soldier because that's technically where he became the new Captain America of this universe. But I just want I just feel like that the one that should take up the character's mantle is the the, the son or daughter of that character. That's just what I believe. That's just what it, I want. It will take over. Yeah. As the new char as the new as their new character of the mantle. But yeah, we gotta finish this video because I don't I wanna download it. So once again, this film it basically brings all five of these movies that I just talked about, all these characters, all these origin stories that we have seen before, bringing them together in one movie to team up to stop the big gigantic threat. And it's pretty much gonna be simpler than that, but there's gonna be a change to it. Uh, obviously the story about them teaming up to stop an intergalactic threat is gonna be the same, but the specific threat at the beginning is gonna be sort of small because Really, the main threat's gonna be Loki, obviously, but he he's gonna be because but there's gonna be somehow Shield's gonna be able to stop them, which gets them separated from Loki's team and his army, and then he'll also and then like different members of the Avengers will defeat these these certain villains like George, this the the guy that that Black Widow fought in the first Avengers movie, uh then he'll because he lost and got separated from his group. He'll be teaming up with Loki, and then the other, which is like a Chitauri guy, he'll be teaming up with them, and they'll basically be like a little group that will team up to get revenge on the, this new team in Nick Fury and stealing the Tesseract. But then at the end of the day, you, they find their armies because Loki is still in contact with the variants, so he brings all these armies together with George's team, the Chitauri, his own army, with Loki's own army. It, it, he's going to collide all of them together to to get revenge on the, this new team to cause ruckus, to get the Avengers assembled, and you're just gonna get a lot of awesome action. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna be as good as the Avengers, the original Avengers, but I'm sure it's gonna be a great time at the movies. Um, any thoughts on this movie? Yes, actually this one I think I would like it because the reason for that is that will be great for the new generation because we grew up with the old generation like uh, the Hulk, Spider-Man, Superman, and whatever heroes are, are there. And then with the new heroes now, and if this movie comes up with all the sons of those superheroes, it would be a good, great movie because some of them might be, you know, passed away or, you know, they die and everything. So for the new uh, uh, super, super Marvel, uh, Marvel movie that comes out and everything would be great because it would be for the new, for the new generation. So I think that would be a, a great movie. Yeah, I, I just like the way it, like, I just love the way it, like, puts, I, I just like how it's a new generation of heroes, and, like, now that all these heroes are gone, we can see a new generation, we can see the kids of these care of these classic characters that we all know and love take up these characters' mantles and continue on w with their legacies, and I just love that. So, that's everything I gotta say, so... Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My Instagram name is Marvel6. My TikTok name is Marvel1Fan. If you guys don't understand those names, head to my bath section so you can follow me on all social medias. 
I'm also on Letterbox. It's the same name as my Instagram, Marvel underscore six underscore. Um, wait, before we go, uh, do you want them? Do you want to know? Do you want? Do you want? Do you want them to know your Instagram and social media? No, that's fine. It's awesome, Nicholas. Do you good work? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, awesome night. And Thank I just. Guys. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah, and I just realized that I didn't plug in my mic, but it's fine because I will do that for future video for future <laughs> purposes. But bye guys. Bye.